let's take a look at Bjergsen's farewell. Hey guys, Soren here, or Bjergsen, and um, I'm feeling a little nervous filming this video. I think it's one of the first times in a very long time where I'm making something, kind of talking directly to the fans. I think the last time I can really remember doing something like this is like the old school TSM vlogs uh, that I used to do back in 2014, 2015. Um, but uh, I want to make this video personally because I want to talk to you guys about the fact that I am a nice stepping away from League of Legends and esports in general, and, and why. Uh, I know this might seem very abrupt, but I want to just make it clear that it's not about our result. It's not about you know the team, my teammates, the split, and, and definitely not about 100 Thieves. 100 Thieves has treated me very well. It's something that's been on my mind for a long time, and just more recently and throughout Spring Split, it just became clearer and clearer to me that this is kind of what I wanted. There is no like, one reason uh, for this decision. This year, playing with 100 Thieves is my 11th year of playing competitively, which is a very long time to kind of be doing the, uh, the same thing or working towards the same goal, being in the same industry. And I've been playing League of Legends for probably like half my <laughs> life at this point. It just doesn't feel as fulfilling as it did when I was younger, just spending all my time playing. I want to give you guys this anecdote. So basically, back 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 when EU West and EU Nordic East was like created, basically they created two servers. Uh, he was on EU Nordic East, and he was he used to play for this team called XL. And then he finally switched to EU West, and I ran into him in solo queue. Basically, I played against him in solo queue. I played Morgana mid, and he played Cassio. And based off of one solo queue game, I wanted to recruit him to my team. <laughs> I was like, yo, we really need to get Bjergsen into our team. And basically we played a couple of weeks and back then he was very shy, like he was very young. I think like back then he was like 15, 15, 14 maybe. Like he was giga young, right? Very shy, you know, loved to play Anivia, you know, looked up to Frogan. And um, basically at one point we played a tournament and we lost and we basically like disbanded the team and uh, and that was it. It's like back then teams were disbanding the same way you fucking switch uh, socks and <laughs> underwear. It was a disaster. We had such a terrible AD carry and then we had a support that was catfishing our jungler. Uh, that it pretended to be a girl. It was a whole mess. And Bjergsen was our mid laner. It was a good time. Uh, we continue. Playing league, studying league, and just chasing winning above everything else. Yeah, the way I'm I see it is either you really enjoy the day to day of. Now, like our super was called Lilac, and she, well, she basically stole pictures from some random person in Malta, and she claimed to study to become a doctor, and she was dating our jungler for like a year. And they never went on camp, they never, like, they never fucking. They never did anything, and it was always so weird. Like, every time they were planning to meet, there was always some, like, weird reason as to why they didn't. Oh, my mother's sick, oh, da 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 It was super weird. And then all of a sudden, some person from Malta was like, Yo, this person is stealing pictures from this woman. She's stealing all of these pictures. This woman's fucked up. Don't listen to her. And then all of a sudden, she disappeared. Her Skype disappeared. Twitter disappeared. Her account was renamed, like crazy shit dude and it's like for me it's like i didn't have that level of attachment like fucking the ju our jungler did right but the fucking uh like it was weird it's like i knew this person for a full year and it turns out that every every like suspicion you had you didn't fucking give a shit you know because oh, she played support she was fine you know decent in the game you know it was fun to to, to like play games whatever i didn't give a shit if this person was uh whatever you know but my 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 jungler, bro, my jungler was fucking together with this person and online. <laughs> ah, we continue. Sorry, Bjergsen. Preparing and, and competing every single week, or you are really like sacrificing look at the your runes. Look at love the runes. every single week, or <laughs> look at the runes. You are really like sacrificing your love for the game and enjoyment of competition for the long term of trying to work your ass off to win a championship or win. An international tournament and Holy, I am. I think just I am going to be super neither of those really are resonating with me anymore. And the last time I won a championship was 2020 summer. And it seems like everything is gonna be great if you win a championship or you accomplish this thing that you wanna accomplish, but I think the just the joy of that achievement is just fleeting for me.
I think just because of the amount of depth that League has, how many champions are in the game, how much the game changes, you have to put in a ton of time if you want to stay at the top. Studying, practicing, thinking about the game, theory crafting, and I always felt like that was a big core reason for my success was just that. I have to add, like, I can, I can relate to what he's saying completely. It's like, it's almost, we are, it's almost as if we have to be delusional about the idea that the satisfaction w will be there the moment we achieve what we set out to. But the only thing that occurs is that we set bigger and more grander goals. I still have that delusion that I'll be satisfied when I win the LEC, when I do better at Worlds, I get to quarters, I get to semis, I get to finals. I still am living on that delusion. And I don't know how long I'm going to be living on that delusion that I will feel satisfied when this will be achieved. Because I will achieve it. I will achieve it. But the delusion is that you will feel satisfied. Because I can tell you, first it was qualifying to playoffs. Then it was doing better in playoffs. And then it was get to the finals. And after getting to the finals, it was like, I want to fucking win. This is fucking bullshit. Losing in the finals against G2. And then you continue forward and you qualify to the world championship. And it's like, oh, we qualified to the world championship. It's a super big deal. And then it's like, yo, I want to get out, get to quarters. And it's like, you, you remember guys, when doing B1 Worlds, one day later, he had an interview. It's like, I'm going to win worlds again. I want to win back-to-back -back world championships. And I can assure you, it's like, Faker won worlds. He's like, let's fucking make it two. Let's make it three. I, I assure you, if Faker had won four worlds instead of three, he would still be doing what he's doing right now. It wouldn't change his outlook. The beauty of it all is that you look back and you create memories and, and, and relationships and bonds that will last a lifetime, right? That is like the benefit of it. But it is driven by this illusion that you'll feel satisfied at some point, but you won't be. That I worked harder than a lot of people and I wanted it more than a lot of those people. And Jackson I was willing to sacrifice hard worker. You know, time with friends, family, personal interests, hobbies, Look at that personal dog curiosities, boy. really just anything. Wait, wait, wait. Don't tell me Bjergsen paints. Bjergsen paints? Yo, if Bjergsen paints these, that is crazy if he paints these. Because the way, the way he said it, personal hobbies. It could be that he collects art. Or he paints. It's an art gallery? Okay, okay. <laughs> if he painted these, I was like, Jesus. For a long time, I've kind of felt and, and even told the people around me that if I didn't feel like I could give my absolute all towards winning and towards being the best and felt like I could be one of the best players in the world, um, that then it would be time to stop. And um, it feels like that time is now. I think for some of you, this might feel like a, a second retirement of some kind. But uh, when I moved to coaching a couple of years ago, even though people said that I retired, it never really felt like that to me. It just felt like a transitioning of roles, but ultimately still working towards winning championships, still working towards success within League of Legends, just from a slightly different perspective within the team. I think working as a player, working as a coach, it's like you choose how many hours you put in because there's always something to do. And I understand why he views it this way, you know, because you can find ways to put in the same amount of effort as a player or even more, you know, there's always things to do. In league, that's 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 the most dangerous and most poisonous thing that really causes burnout. It's like after every season, I am burnt out to a fucking crust at the end of the season. To me, this is really my because first and only in my more. career, like step away from competing and, and from League of Legends esports. I really wish all the best to my former teammates and coworkers at Hundred Thieves, and I hope they find success in Summer Split. I'll be rooting for them uh, from the sidelines as a fan. A lot of you are probably wondering what is next for me. And um, to be honest, I don't really know. Uh, I've kind of made the decision to not uh, immediately go into coaching or streaming or something adjacent to pro playing. And I want to just kind of take some time away with friends and family. And I just kind of want to see what my life is like when my identity and all my time is not tied up in, in League of Legends and trying to achieve competitive success. That's cool. That's cool. I don't know if at some point I'm going to return to League of Legends or the esports industry. Um, Fortnite. But all I know is right now I'm going to take some time away and that I don't know what the future holds and just to be okay with, with stepping into that uncertainty.
That's nice. Competing in League of Legends and esports has really changed my life in every way imaginable. I started playing professionally when I was 16 years old, and it really brought me out of a really dark place. Initially, League was just an escape for me, an escape from school and being bullied and all my struggles in life. And I never really felt competent at anything. Even when I was playing professional in my earlier years, I felt like League is the only thing that I'm competent at or even know how to do. And I think with time, League really showed me that if I apply myself to something, if I really study something, if I put my heart and soul into something, I can actually be competent and skillful at something. And with the years learned that that doesn't just apply to League, I can apply that to so many other things in life and, and things I want to learn. And I think also just competing for so many years uh, on so many different teams and working so intimately with people, you get kind of a connection and a friendship that I'm kind of yet to find outside of that. It really gives you a tight bond when you're working through all these issues day and night. We used to even all live together in the same gaming house. <laughs> yeah, I think it's just really like broadened my horizons and allowed me to meet so many different types of people. And to this day, a lot of my closest friendships are through, you know, League of Legends and, and the team and the surrounding sports staff. If it wasn't for League, I don't even know if I would be alive today because I was very suicidal back then and didn't really see much reason for living. So I pretty much owe everything that I have and the person that I am today to um, League of Legends and, and my career in it. I don't think it's sad, guys. It's hard to begin to thank individual people because there's just too many people that have helped and supported me throughout this long journey. I'm so happy for them. I just want to give a, a general big thank you I'm to, happy for First of all, the fans, you guys, my, my supporters that have made this entire thing possible. If it wasn't for you um, supporting and watching my games and watching my streams and my rare, at this point, tweets, um, I wouldn't have been able to, to do any of this. So, uh, yeah, I'm extremely thankful for you guys and, um, and just... I never thought in the beginning that I would be able to do this for so long. I thought, you know, maybe I'll just play professionally a year and then maybe I'll have to go back to school or two years. And I'm sitting here like 10 plus years later and it's just all very surreal and it's all thanks to you guys. And um, yeah, I just want to thank the people that, uh, you know, everyone that, that took a chance on me, everyone that decided to help me become a better person, better leader, better player. Uh, everyone that believed in me along the way and supported me. Uh, I could never have achieved anything in League of Legends without all these people helping me along the way, making me a, a smarter and better person. So uh, hopefully you guys know who you are watching the video. So, so thank you guys. Yeah, uh, without a doubt, Bjergsen is the North American GOAT. In the game, outside of the game, there was never any controversy about Bjergsen. He was always a damn role model, you know? Very similar to who, who, what, what Faker is, right? It's like as a representative of what North American League of Legends is and the LCS, I think Bjergsen was the perfect role model, you know? For the region, uh, for the game, for the sport. He has left a legacy behind and I am truly happy for him that he gets to leave everything behind on his terms. I think the way he phrased himself here is is definitely, you know, uh, this seems to be like the, the best way to, to move away from something. And uh, I think it is true for, for many people that are competing in esports that uh, 
uh, <laughs> our life was saved, you know? It's like I growing up, like me growing up, I was fucking bullied and shit, you know? And, you know, me moving to Germany to, to play league, it's like going into the league universe. It was, I became the person who I wanted to be, you know? Because everyone around you uh, tends to put you in boxes, you know? It will be, you'll be missed, for sure. I hope he enjoys his rest because he has truly, truly earned it and he has done so much uh, for, for the game and he has inspired so, so many. So, nothing but respect for Bjergsen. Even coming into this last year, you know, it's like him and Doublelift, they can sit on piles of cash and they can take it easy, but they chose to, to compete. So then you know that they are competing for the purest reasons, you know? It's no longer about money or anything else. They're competing for the purest reasons. So, he did play in the LEC, uh, Jack Frump. But all in all, uh, nothing but respect for Bjergsen, really. The, the the LCS was so fucking lucky to to have him. You know, back then, joining TSM was, you know, the dream for everyone, you know? You get the TSM contract and you're set for life. That's how we view TSM back then. And and, and Bjergsen was the... Was, uh, was the one, you know, to replace Reginald. You might not think much about TSM now, but TSM was was legendary, you know. They also have left a, a, a massive legacy. Okay. Oh man, that video was a lot better than I expected because I thought it's just, um, you know, I, I, I think he seems very down to earth. I'm very happy for him.